want to just preach to you for just a few minutes um, something that the Lord, the Lord put on my heart um, about three weeks ago. Uh, I had a different message that I was going to preach today. And about three weeks ago, the Lord just began to navigate my heart in this direction. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the Gospel of Luke, the Gospel of Luke chapter 2. Wasn't worship so good this morning? Isn't it so easy to worship on significant days? And I'm so glad you're here. It was going to be really awkward for me to preach to myself. But well, sometimes that's the best sermons when you're looking at yourself in the mirror. Hallelujah. I'm just glad I'm not having to look at a mirror today. We ate too much. Amen. We're going to finish this series, and, and while you're turning to the Gospel of Luke, last, last night was just such a beautiful moment, such a beautiful time with the Lord at our candlelight service. The place was almost completely full, packed out, and there was this one particular moment where the glory of the Lord just kind of settled in this room. And I remember sitting there thinking, y'all, I know y'all need me to be spiritual all the time, but sometimes I'm just carnal. And I remember sitting there, and, and we're in the middle of worship, and the glory of the Lord is in the room, and I thought, my God, we can't even have a traditional candlelight service without the Holy Ghost taking over. And as soon as I got that thought into my mind, I went, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Last night, 1,310,000 plus were worshiping with us at our candlelight. And the, uh, the owner of the radio station, he sent me a message last night. I saw it early this morning. He sent it last night. He said, there was something that happened with Mary, did you know? He said, and I'm sitting there listening to Mary, did you know? And I just begin to cry as he's putting it on the station. Just love it when the Holy Spirit just does significant things. Today, um, I want to preach to you out of the series, All I Want for Christmas, this thought, all I want for Christmas is Christmas. This is going to be a good old Christmas sermon today, okay? All I want for Christmas is Christmas. And the reason why I prefaced and, and titled this message today, All I Want for Christmas is Christmas, is because this is the craziest season of the year. You, you may not feel this way, but I feel like this time of year is absolutely exhausting. It is exhausting. You got to go see these people. You got to go see these people. You got to do this. You got to do that. How, I'm, how many more colored electricities do we have to look at? Come on. And it is exhausting. What you may not realize is there are a hundred and two, at least 102 national holidays in the month of December that our nation recognizes 102 significant days in the month of December. Now, you know that there's only 31 days in the month, but there are over 102 nationally recognized holidays or days in our nation. I'm going to give you a couple of them. Did you know that in the month of December, there's a pie day? Some of you missed it. Some of you missed it. Did you know that there is a eat a red apple day in the month of December? For some of y'all going to appreciate this one. There is a national I have a mutt day. See, every dog has its day. I appreciate that. There's a national roof over my head day. Anybody thank God that you have a roof over your head day? There is a national flashlight day. Now, for those of you that's lost power over the last couple of days, you were wondering, were you observing national flashlight day? On December the 4th, it is nationally recognized as sock day and also cookie day. On December the 6th, it's national microwave oven day. On December the 7th, they recognize it as cotton candy day. On December the 8th, it's National Hot Chocolate Day. On December the 9th, it is National My Pathologist Is My Pal Day. <laughs> Say la, think about that. Some of you haven't missed this one yet. December the 26th is National Winers Day. Some of y'all are going to observe that. I hear you. 
December, and then on December the 30th, it's National No Interruptions Day. Now, I submit to you that's because of college football playoffs and things going on, the bowls. And then on December the 31st, it is recognized as National Make Up Your Mind Day. Hmm. But you and I know that today represents the most recognized holiday of the entire month and truly the most recognized holiday of the entire year. It, it, it is surrounded with traditions and is surrounded with cubs, customs, yet many of us miss the importance of what this day actually is. You can observe the customs, you can observe the traditions and completely miss the day. All I want for Christmas is Christmas. I don't want to be so involved in Christmas that I miss Christmas. The Gospel of Luke chapter 2. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were, co were completed for her to be delivered. Watch verse 7. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. Watch this. Because there was no room for them in the inn. The innkeeper missed Christmas. He had the opportunity above all other people to not miss this moment. But he missed Christmas. And according to verse number seven, the reason he missed it is because he was already filled with other people. There, there are people, I'm going to give you three examples of why people miss Christmas. Num number one, busy people will miss Christmas. The, the innkeeper missed it because he was too busy. He had too many customers. He had too many people. He had too many. He was too full with other people. And he missed an incredible moment to allow history to be made manifest that would shake the world for all of history to happen right underneath his roof. But he missed it because he was already real busy. What is the good for my business may not be the best for my life. Mm. The, the innkeeper, y'all think about this, with the woman with the two mites made such an impact with God that for all of history, we know this woman with the two, we don't even know her name, but we know her offering. You and I, for all of history, would have recognized the innkeeper for him seizing the moment of not missing Christmas, but he was too busy with other people. And he missed a moment that was laid in front of him. Now, there, there's another side of me. There's a business side of me. There's a marketing side of me. Let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me tap into it for a minute. Can you imagine the kind of claim to fame you could have with marketing? That Jesus was born in your hotel? Come on. Jesus slept here. Now, right here in room 316. Oh, y'all picked that up, didn't you? In room 316, this is exactly the spot where Jesus was born. And for a whopping discounted rate of $999.99, you too could stay in the very seat. We'll even bring in a manger for an extra $15. Uh, and if you ring room, ring room service for another $200, we'll serve you an isolated pot of communion for you to partake of. Oh, I could have worked that all day. He was wrapped in swaddling clothes. For another $45, we'll have one of our guests come in and swaddle you right before we lay. <laughs> right there in room 360. Now, the reason why I say that is because I, one, of, one of my favorite places to, to go when, when 
the pace of Charlotte, the pace of, of, of planting the church. I'm, I'm a country boy. I was born in the country. Country boy. I'm a country boy. And there are moments when the pace of this gets really beyond me and I have to go back to my roots. Yeah, but I can't go home because there's too many skeletons. Well, where I go is I go to Mayberry. I go to Mount Airy. I do. I go to Mount Airy. I climb. Some of y'all don't even know what I'm talking about. Just hang with me. I, I will drive about an hour and a half up to Mayberry, and I will walk around the streets of the town of Mayberry, and I'll go through the museum, and I'll, do, and I'll just kind of chill. I'll eat at Skippy's. Some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Y'all need to get a life. And I'll just be reminded of, of the pace of days gone by for me. And it's a time for me to walk and a time to pray. And the last time I was there, something crazy happened. I had one of the guys stop. They, they have like Barney's cop car that you can rent and do the whole tour or whatever. I ain't got time for that. I'm trying to walk around and be, not be around anybody. You know what I'm saying? And one of them stopped. And we were in the little gas station. And I was grabbing um, one of those orange drinks that Andy had growing up. And... The guy said to me, he said, you, you do know that you could actually stay at the house that he grew up in. And I'm like, why would I want to stay in the house he grew up in? I don't want to sleep in Andy Griffith's bed. That's weird. <laughs> but there are people that will absolutely, it sells out like crazy. It's sold all the time to reminisce and to relive, to try to put yourself in the perspective of Andy. I don't want to have the perspective of Andy Griffith. But what I do have to have is the pace of the days gone by to make sure that I don't miss moments while I'm trying to fulfill mission. And the busyness of the innkeeper, the fullness of the innkeeper, he missed a moment where for the rest of his life, for the rest of his lineage, he could have set up things for his entire lineage if he had not have been too busy being filled with other people. Busy people will miss Christmas. Maybe, maybe you're sitting here today and you're already out of this room. You're already out. Well, we got to go here and we got to go here and that's why we're, we got to, and we got to do this. And we'll be so busy doing the traditions of Christmas when what we really need is Christmas. Number two, people who are too familiar will miss Christmas. Ah, I've heard this story. We read it this morning. I was at the candlelight service. We already read this scripture. How many more times are we going to have to hear yet another sermon or another story about the Christmas message? See, we've become too familiar. It, it's interesting to me that it took wise men from the Orient to get a perspective of Christmas that all of the religious leaders of Jerusalem and Israel missed. Why did they miss it? And these, these men traveled months to get to the moment of Christmas when the religious people who were closest to God and in the favor of God missed it. I submit to you because it was too familiar. They had heard all the prophecies. They knew all the stories. They had all of the traditions. They had all of the customs. And because they already knew everything about everything, they started tripping over a baby because they were focused on a star. Because it's just too familiar. Now, of all the people that showed up at Christmas, there was not one scribe. There was not one priest. There was not one theologian. There wasn't a Pharisee that was invited to the. When the angels of the Lord showed themselves, they showed themselves to shepherds. But none of the religious people of that day had the opportunity to be invited into the moment of Christmas. Why? I submit to you because it was way too familiar. Because I've learned something. That normal is relative. Normal is relative. It's, it's so interesting how normal things can be. I, we had two of our college students that came home last weekend, and both of them in their own way had moments to kind of talk to me. And both of them, separate six occasions, looked at me and said, hey, listen, I just want you to know that this is going to be my last semester at this particular, these two particular schools in different ones up in the north and ones down way south. And they're like, we're, we're done. We're coming back. And I'm like, well, why are you coming back? 
And I quote both of them separate conversations because I can't find any place like Judah. One of them in particular. And I did not appreciate it while I was here. And it took me leaving and starving to recognize how precious a thing is that was so familiar to me. These religious leaders of the day, they were more focused on the debate of the Redeemer than the discovery of him. They they wanted to debate who he was going to be and when it was going to be. And they missed the discovery of him because they were so focused on being the smartest person at the debate table. Hmm. They, They pursued traditions when they could have discovered him. They ran after their customs instead of running after him. Too familiar. And and that's what I love about this particular day is because you and I had to make a decision today. As whether or not today was about family or today was about Jesus. We, We had to make a decision. That, that was today going to be all about what Santa did? Or are we going to take a moment and lob it off that this is about what the Savior has done and is doing? And, and I throw no shade at people who aren't here. And I'm not preaching to the choir because you had to make a decision. And the decision was, am I going to get my family up? Am I going to make my kids leave their presence? To come stand in his presence and say thank you. I got debated so much about this particular moment. You having church? Why are you having church? Well, yeah. And and somewhere along, Em and I, we had this conversation on the road um, a couple days ago. We were driving, and, and it is so frustrating to me to listen to Pharisees. And we've boiled this day down to, if you don't have church, you're unspiritual. And if you do have church, you're the really saved ones. Well, how about this? Just be obedient to whatever Holy Spirit is telling you to do. Just be obedient. It's not about being spiritual or unspiritual. It's about being obedient. To what Holy Spirit has caused you to do. And, 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 and for me on a very personal level, it would be easy for me to get caught up in the numbers. Well, if a lot of people show up, we did the right thing. And if a lot of people did not show up, we won't do this again seven years from now. It, it's not about whether you showed up or whether you didn't show up. And those who didn't show up that they should have shown up. That's not the point. The point is, I'm the shepherd of this house and I have to be obedient to the shepherd that I am the under shepherd towards. And here's what he told me to do. And if none of you came, it didn't disqualify me from being obedient to what he has described for me. Because I'll stand before God for how I feed my sheep. What good is it for me to have starving people and they can't get in the door? It's not about being spiritual or unspiritual. Listen, this doesn't make you more saved because you came today. Like, there's not a special place in heaven reserved for you now. Like, he's not popping jewels in your crown because you came to death. And you don't get to sit at dinner tonight with family and friends who didn't go there and look down your your judgmental nose and act like they're not near as spiritual as you. Okay, thank you, Jesus. So I lift up my hands, praise you again. But I'm afraid he's become too familiar and we'll miss Christmas. We won't won't know the difference between Frosty and Jesus. Between Rudolph and Jesus. 
between Santa and Jesus, Be between a really strange small little elf that keeps popping around all around our house and Jesus. Okay, for, for all my Jewish Messianic Jews, for the minch on the bench. I have to really be careful how I say that. Versus the elf on the shelf. You know, we'll get caught up in all the seven fishes that we eat. And we'll meet with the gatherings and the work gatherings and the family gather. And we'll be too familiar. And we'll make Christmas about us. And miss Christmas because we have no room for him. Number three, fearful people will miss Christmas. Fearful people will miss Christmas. Fear makes people miss Christmas. It's amazing to me. I can walk around with a cross on my neck with, with, with a church or a slogan or scriptures on my clothes and I can step into a store and still the, 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 the worker will look at me slant-eyed and say, happy holidays? Nah, dog, Merry Christmas. Yeah. Oh, okay, you oh, Merry Christmas. Why? Because they're afraid. They're afraid of what? They're afraid of being offensive and losing their job or being reprimanded. Repr reprimanded. When God may be trying to use them so somebody doesn't miss Christmas. So it's amazing how we inundate our world with fear tactics. Happy holidays, or you, you say that or you get in trouble. Listen, the, the, the shepherds were in the field watching their flock by. It was a dark time in their life. And when the glory of the Lord shone about them, their natural response was they became greatly afraid. See, when God comes, he will shift what you're used to into what he desires for it to be. And the first emotional response most often is that of fear. And we become afraid because he's ushering in a new moment, a new day, and we become afraid of it instead of embracing it, embracing it because we've gotten used to seeing in the night. But I, I don't throw shade at people who are afraid and they'll miss Christmas. Here's why. Because when bad news is all you've ever heard, the good news will make you immediately afraid. When all you've known is sadness, depression, joy will make you immediately afraid. When all you've known is war, peace will immediately make you afraid. And people are afraid to open themselves to Jesus. I, I, man, I can't, I, I, I can't, listen, I can be religious and I can be traditional, but for me to open myself to Jesus, listen, here, I'm going to give you the three reasons most often why people will not open themselves to Jesus. Number one, to fully give myself to Jesus means I lose my freedom. I have to stop doing what I want to do. If I give myself to Jesus, I'm going to have to break up with them. I'm going to have to deny my flesh. I'm going to have to give up this. I'm going to have to stop going here. I'm going to have to stop being. And I give up all my freedoms if I give myself to Jesus. I'll just remind you, that's not freedom. They just gave you a little greater place for you to be in incarceration. You're, you're out in the yard versus in the cell. But you're still in prison. Because the Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. If you want to know where freedom is, freedom is when you are in Jesus. Freedom is when you are in his presence. Freedom is when you have allowed the spirit of the Lord to dwell on. That's where real freedom. You do not lose your freedom. You get loosed into your freedom with Jesus. Give myself fully to Jesus means I lose my freedom or, or, or even worse, I lose my fun. I get, I'm become miserable. Have you not seen church people? I love God and I'm happy about it. 
Look like you got baptized in lemon juice. Look like you smell what somebody had the night before. You know, never mind, I need to shut up. Y'all, if you're miserable and you're in the beloved, you ain't doing it right. I'm having the time of my life. It is crazy. I love, it's joy unspeakable. It may not always be easy, but it has always been worth it. And I'm having the time of my life. I'm blessed beyond measure. I have peace beyond measure. I have joy beyond measure. I have a hope in somebody that is much greater than me. I don't have to work for it. I don't have to grind for it. I don't have to hustle for it. I can lean not on even my own understanding because I know he's directing my path, that my steps have been ordered by him, that before I was formed in my mother's womb, he had already predetermined who was I going to be. Sister, some people are trusted in horses and chariots and everything else, but I I have a name that is a strong tower that if, when I'm righteous, I can run in and be saved. I'm having a time of my life. There ain't no part of like Holy Ghost party. Holy Ghost party don't stop. Come on. I'm having a time of my life. I am having the time of my life. And if you are miserable loving Jesus, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. I got about eight songs in the back of my head right now. <laughs> Get your back up off the wall. <sighs> Come on. Y'all are way too, I see I'm getting older and older. <laughs> I, can't, I can't love Jesus, I lose my fun. Are you nuts? I'm having the time of my life. I get to hang out with some of the craziest people I ever met in my life. And only Jesus can love them. And only Jesus in me is going to help me to love them. I married that woman for lust. But he turned it into love. And y'all, 25 years, I'm having the time of my life. <laughs> I'd be walking around with mistletoe. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, I need to move on. Merry Christmas. I lose my freedom. I lose my fun. Or this one. The reason I can't serve Jesus is because I'll become a fanatic. Y'all, this wasn't manipulation and indoctrination. This has been an experiential journey that I've been on. And I have, I, I, I used to be infatuated with God. Now I'm in covenant. And he has proven himself to me faithful time and time and time again. And even when I prayed and asked him to do things that he didn't do, and he looked at me and said, I'm not doing that for you, but my grace will be sufficient. And I found sufficient grace even in the weakest of times, even in the loneliest. I'm a fanatic today, not by indoctrination or manipulation. I'm, I'm a fanatic today because he has been so faithful to me, to my great grandparents, to my grandparents, to my parents. But most of all, I have found him to be faithful to me. He is, I've watched him heal. I've watched him save. I've watched him deliver. I've watched himself make himself available to people like me that have no business being able to walk into the throne room of grace and call him Abba Father. He has chosen me and loved me with an everlasting love. And I have seen it time and time. And this is not religion. This is not Pharisee and Sadducee stuff. This is not customs and traditions and me giving myself excuses to not be what I'm supposed to be. No. He has proven himself. He has made himself available to me and he is the light and the love of my salvation. And I am the way I am not because I've been indoctrinated or manipulated but I have found him and he found me and loved me with an everlasting love and I can't help it because when I'm in love this is the way I act it's the way I act and they're afraid you lose your freedom that's a lie from the hell you lose your fun that's a lie from hell I'll become a fanatic mmm but not for the reasons you think. I have not become radicalized by certain classes that I have sat in. It is an experience. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I, I've known him and he knows me. This is why 
We are. Mm. And people of the light will always look crazy to those who are used to see it in the dark. And I would rather live as children of the light. Joey, come on. I, I want to close with this in Luke chapter 2, the Gospel of Luke. Gospel of Luke chapter 2. This is the power of Christmas, and I don't want you to miss it today. There were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. Look at this. And they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For behold, I bring to you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you that you will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was an, with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God saying, here it is, glory to God in the highest and on earth goodwill towards men. Don't miss Christmas today. I don't have enough Latinos in this room. Otherwise, I would say, don't miss Christ Mas. Por favor. Don't miss it. Don't miss him. If you're grateful and you have room for him in your life, would you just speak worship all over this room? Just speak worship. Make room for him today. Make room for the Lord today. King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you.
Say 
for a heart singing high.